Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Phil Rowley. Today we're coming to you from Muir Lake, a unique stillwater fishery a mere 45 minutes from downtown Edmonton. Joining me today is Mike Monteith, local Edmonton guide and owner of Edmonton Stillwater Adventures. It's late fall, it's gorgeous, it's boatman and back swimmer time. I know you're going to learn a lot, it should be a great show. has been made possible thanks to Orvis Ontario yours to discover Islander precision fly reels Today the new Fly Fisher crew visits Muir Lake an easily accessible quality still water located a short drive west of Edmonton Alberta's capital city in addition to quality fly fishing, Edmonton offers numerous other attractions including museums, professional sporting events, and the world famous West Edmonton Mall. Muir is a shallow, fertile lake managed as a quality still water featuring seasonal closures, bait ban, and reduced harvest regulations. Historically known as a premium trout lake, Muir suffered from periodic winter kills. The Freshwater Fisheries Enhancement Society, or FISA, was instrumental in returning Muir to its historical status. Their hard work and dedication deserves a pat in the back for a job well done. You know, in recent years, pontoon boat manufacturers have come leaps and bounds, and they're such a great way to get on the water, whether it's rivers and streams or lakes like here in Muir Lake. A couple of things you can look for. This pontoon boat features nice double air bladders, double stitched for flotation and maneuverability. Got a nice lightweight aluminum frame. Good oars for propulsion. Nice comfortable seat. Lots of storage for reels, fly boxes, whatever you want to bring. Anchor systems at the back, and I put in a front anchor system to stop uh, sway when I'm anchoring. I like to be steady. A pair of swim fins, always a good idea on lakes for fine maneuvering and uh, just everything you need for a comfortable day on the water. You should really look into getting these things. They're really handy, really portable. Joining me today is Mike Monteith of Edmonton Stillwater Adventures. Mike is a local stillwater specialist. His expertise and intimate knowledge of the Edmonton area lakes such as Muir will make today's adventure a success. Okay, we've got fish on here and that was simply I'd made my cast and I was letting the fly sink and the fish took it on the drop, which would suggest the natural downward path of a boatman or a back swimmer. You gotta remember, these are air breathing insects, so they're constantly making trips from the bottom to the surface to replenish their oxygen supply. They trap a little bubble of air along their bottom and along their body rather, along the bottom of their body, and they use that to survive underwater. So they're really prisoners of the shallows, and at this time of the year, they're very active. And this is a good looking fish, so I'm gonna get it, keep tension on the fish, and clear the decks here. So if this fish makes a sudden run, I don't run the risk, hopefully, of losing it, because my fly line catches around my foot, or an anchor peg or, or something like that. So we'll just keep the tension on. And now I'm gonna put the rod position low and let that fish run. See how my rod tips high when that fish runs? And the second he stops running, he's running left, I give him right side pressure. If he's running right, I give him left side pressure and I get the full bend of the rod into the fish and I can defeat him quickly. Beautiful condition. This is what we came here for. It's hard to believe we're only 35 minutes, 40 minutes from downtown Edmonton. So I'm just going to get the fly in here. I'm going to take the fly out and I'll show it to you at home. 
what a quality fish we've got here right here in Edmonton. And he took, he took the little dropper fly, which is a little size 16 crystal boatman pattern. So we'll just throw all that out of the way, wet my hands, and this fish is full of energy. That <laughs> was a gorgeous Muir Lake fish. Hopefully you got a glimpse of that. But we'll get some more. They're starting to come on. And we're starting to see some action. Could be a great afternoon. Okay, it's a beautiful fall day here on Muir Lake. We're actually starting to see some boatmen move. I've actually been hit by a couple. On a day like today, it'll look like little raindrops as they crash down in the water. They go through mating and migration flights. What I'm doing here, I've got a washing line set up. It's an English technique that simply consists of a buoyant fly on the point and a less buoyant or traditional nymph or, in this case, boatman pattern, on the dropper. So what I did there is as I stopped my retrieve, I just raised my rod, which hung the flies momentarily, paused, and that buoyant pattern probably bobbed the whole rig, the dropper and itself, up to the surface, and this rainbow pounced on it right away. Yeah, it took the buoyant back swimmer pattern right in the snout. So we got to use, as Mike said, we got to use strong tippet as recommendation. We've got lots of weed growth here from the summer, and we pulled it out of its snout. And again, that's the trouble. You can see the weeds here. Those, fly, those fish, as soon as they're hooked, will bury themselves right into the weeds and really stress your tackle and your technique. Muir Lake is a shallow, productive lake. Uh, it's about 78 acres in size. And back in the 60s and 70s, it was uh, stocked by the Alberta government. They had stopped stocking because of uh, winter kill issues. After the government stopped stocking Muir Lake, it lay dormant for about 30 years with little activity. And then uh, four Edmonton fishing clubs got together and uh, they decided to, uh, to look for a quality fishery. And uh, Muir Lake was uh, one of the lakes that we looked at. After we completed the analysis on Muir Lake, uh, we came up with a plan. Uh, we decided to put aerators on the lake. Uh, we stocked the lake back in 2003, and today it's a quality fishery with uh, fish being caught up to 24 inches. Mike, we're using floating lines here in the shallow bay for obvious reasons, but what are some of the other lines you like to use and other situations you'd use them? One of the other lines I like to use, Phil, is a traditional sink line, and with that line, uh, instead of the uniform where the entire line sinks, it, uh, it forms a belly in it, like a U-shape. And uh, that'll pull the boatman or the back swimmer down, and it'll come down in a U-shape. And uh, it'll rise back up again, just as the, uh, the real boatman and back swimmers do when they're, when they're under the surface. So I was just doing the very slow, long strip and the long pause, and he took it on the pause. And we're just going to try to get him on the reel here. He wants to go right now. Looks like another beautiful Muir Lake rainbow. It's quite the fishery you've got here, Mike. Your clients must love it. Boy, you just don't want to give up, do you? And with the colors that we're seeing on these, Phil, it's, uh, you'd think that they were into their spring spawn. But it is a sort of a dark, weedy environment, and I think that's just what they need to survive. Or you get the white pelicans here, a couple of loons. Is a, I've seen ospreys here before, so just their way of taking care of themselves. Oh, beautiful fish. Thick. What a healthy rainbow bite. Holy smokes. And look at the thickness of that rainbow. That's the price for those weeds, just full of food. Okay, relax. Great Muir Lake Rainbow. Mike and I are just going to take a few minutes to review our favorite boatmen and back swimmer patterns with you. Remember, boatmen are smaller insects with light backs and dark bellies. Back swimmers are larger, generally eights and tens, with light backs and dark bellies. That's because they swim inverted. 
Probably your first pattern you can think about is a good old Prince Nymph. It's an excellent Boatman and Backstrom imitation. And here, Mike, you've got, this is your uh, backstrom imitation. What's the white material you're using for the shell back? That's a Stillwater Midge Gill. And what I've done is I've just marked it up with a permanent marker to give it uh, a little bit of color. Yeah, a little bit of modeling. And you've got those wonderful stretch floss legs that imitate that rowing motion that both insects uh, use with their legs as they scull through the water. The next pattern here is a uh, peacock back swimmer of mine. It's got uh, some pearl mylar on the back to the lighter back. And uh, again, the, uh, these are silly legs, same material. We've got the uh, Ultimate Boatman. This is a BC pattern that features a preformed foam body uh, affixed to the hook shank and some creative use of a permanent marker to look like a back swimmer. Excellent floating pattern, well, well worth your while in the box to work around weed beds. Mike, this is your Water Dockman. This is a unique little fly. And this is a tan nymph skin, and it gives it a segmented body, much like the natural. And it's also got a brown sheet foam coming over it. Uh, that gives it a floatability, and it's also got the super stretch floss legs in it. Yeah, and there's my little uh, foam back swimmer, uh, excuse me, foam boatman pattern. And again, with that dark back, and uh, it's got a light Fentex yellowish olive uh, body. Uh, the naturals generally be a, a yellow or tan color or a light olive. Again, you got to catch the local insects and have a look. And then this is uh, my crystal boatman with crystal flash on the back. I uh, used um, Weta Hook Technologies epoxy sub to give it a shine and some durability. And again, those signature uh, round rubber hackles, silly legs, or stretch floss to imitate that rowing motion that these insects use to propel themselves through the water. Our most consistent boatman back swimmer pattern today was the ultimate boatman. Here is the tying recipe so you can add this deadly pattern to your collection. The foam body of the Ultimate Boatman allows snag-free presentation into shallow, weedy areas. Used on a sinking line, its buoyant nature mimics the U-shaped travel path of the natural water boatmen and back swimmers. sitting in an anchored boat, you don't always want to be placing your fly and retrieving it through the same place every time. You want to fan cast. And what I mean by that is you want to spread your casts out. Maybe I'll start up here to my left and every five to ten feet, depending on water clarity, I'll literally spread the casts out and cover a wide area. I want to present my fly on a lot of different angles and different places in the water column to find a fish. Don't repeatedly work the same stretch of water. Got one. Seems like a decent size. He didn't take it on the strip. He took it uh, right after I cast it. I just let it, let it sit. And again, what I got on is the back swimmer on the point. That's a sinking fly. And then I got the floating boatman on the dropper and I haven't seen him yet so I don't know which one he took but it was right after I cast I just let it sit there I didn't even strip it and he took it well that's a good and I'm just testament trying to, to the quality of the fly I'm just trying to keep him away from the anchor ropes here and of course he wants to run into the weeds We have a double header. You got one on, Phil? Yep. Double header. <laughs> double header. Not as big as yours, but a nice little fish. They seem to be coming on just as the last hours of light fade. This one took same situation you have, Mike. I've got a uh, the washing line technique, which is a uh, foam-bodied back swimmer on the back and a little boatman hanging off the front, about four feet apart and uh, just short strips and he banged this one so I'll just get my net bring him in could be for, in for some interesting evenings fishing there we go so we're looking at 19 inches oh, oh. there we go look at that what a gorgeous rainbow Mike 35 minutes from downtown Edmonton. Unbelievable. You know, there's not a lot of places around that uh, you can drive 35 minutes and catch such beautiful big trout. And they're only going to get bigger. Do 
just resting nicely there. I think he kind of likes you, the smoothness, smooth caress of your hands. He's a beauty. And there he goes, another fall Muir Lake rainbow. This is a small uh, stocking from this year, probably at one of the triploids they're experimenting with here on Muir Lake. Triploid is a sterile rainbow, all growth development doesn't go into the gonads, just goes into growing uh, big and fat. So we'll put this guy back and this could be a uh, four or five pound rainbow in really short order. So a beautiful little Muir Lake rainbow. There he goes. In Alberta, we're allowed to use up to three flies. I prefer to use, on the average, two when I'm fly fishing still waters. How I attach a dropper is a technique borrowed from Czech nymphing. It's called the sliding dropper. Here in my hands is my tippet knot, about three to four feet above the, the uh, point fly, and this is a triple surgeon's. In about 10 inches of tippet material, I've tied a perfection loop. I simply lay that under the line above the surgeon's knot, slide the tag through the loop, pull on the tag end, pull on the tag end, so like so, it's pulled through, slide it tight, and now the dropper slides, the triple surgeon's knot forming a stopper, preventing it from sliding all the way down to the point fly. The sliding dropper is an excellent alternative to tag ends off blood knots or triple surgeon's knots. Extra flies can be added or subtracted with ease. The next time you're out fly fishing still waters or drifting nymphs through rivers, try the sliding dropper. It's a great method. Water boatmen and back swimmers are two of the most commonly confused insects when it comes to still water fly fishing. Back swimmers are the larger of the two and feature light backs and dark bellies, generally sizes 10 through 8. You've got to be careful, these are entirely predaceous and they can give you a nasty bite on a pain level similar to a wasp sting. Water boatmen are smaller and feature dark backs and light bellies and generally range from 12 down through 16. And he indeed took the, uh, the back swimmer dropper, the floating back swimmer. Well that's great, we've seen both moving here today so this is always a good tactic is to uh, combine both a smaller boatman pattern with a larger back swimmer pattern and let the fish choose what they want to feed on. <sighs> and we're looking at a 19 inch rainbow trout, a male, It's a beautiful Muir Lake fall rainbow. Got on a back swimmer. Today we use five and six weight systems to catch fish using boatmen and back swimmers. Here I've got a uh, intermediate tip line. This worked very well for me in the shallows and into the deeper water, eight to nine feet. Mike and I also took fish using floating lines, long leaders, 12, 15, 16 feet with a couple of boatman patterns. And then Mike also took fish on the clear intermediate. These are three lines you might want to consider whenever you go boatman and back swimmer fishing. Water boatmen and back swimmers swim with an erratic swimming motion. Lots of quick rapid movements with their oar-like hind legs because they have to keep constantly moving or that air bubble that they trap along their bodies will bob them right back up to the surface. So we can do this a couple of ways. Short quick strips with pauses or a steady jerky hand twist. You experiment with them until you find one the fish decide is the one they want for that particular day. So mix and match, keep things irregular until you find a consistent pattern. Like that. Look at that. This is a high spirited fish and it's starting to take some line and realizing that it's hooked. So we'll just uh, try to keep things out of harm's way. And this is giving a good account of itself. The water has been cool, so these fish are full of energy. Winter's coming. They're strapping on the feed bag. And these boatmen and back swimmers that are everywhere now are really uh, 
good source of protein for these fish as they prepare for winter, the long winter ahead here. Again, keep tight to the fly. Don't lose concentration on the fish. Gather line when you can. I've got fairly stout tippet here. I'm using eight pound fluorocarbon. These new fluorocarbons are so thin and so strong. It's just no need to go light unless you absolutely, absolutely feel you have to in super clear conditions. But with these fish burrowing down into the weeds, we need something in our favor to not have them break us off in the dense weeds. And this is a beautiful silver Muir Lake rainbow. Again, just unbelievable fishery, so close to Edmonton. You know, you can go catch a football game, you can go to the mall, visit some of the museums and other local attractions, and then spend the afternoon out here. Book, book a trip with Mike, come out here and spend a wonderful afternoon sampling these Stillwater rainbows. What a gorgeous fat fish. Wow, is that a nice fish. We're just gonna get the fly out. He really took this fly. He liked it. There we go. Out of harm's way. He took the uh, foam-based ultimate boatman on the point. So I'm using a, what I'm using here is a fly line with a hover or intermediate tip. And there's another fat, magnificent Muir Lake rainbow. What a quality fishery. I hope you enjoyed today's show, learned a little bit more about fishing boatmen and back swimmers. For more information on this and other shows in our informative series, please visit us on the World Wide Web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis, Ontario, yours to discover, Islander Precision Fly Reels,